Welcome back to the Maratha Confederacy of British, where last time we invaded the United Provinces and took a couple of those provinces. We also resisted an invasion by a combined Savoy United Provinces force at Paris. And now we're going to step out for a field battle against what looks like most of what the United Provinces has left. Like any good battle, it has got to start with a cav charge from the enemy. This is going to be another one of those battles where because the enemy have their troops across three different armies and they all kind of act a bit independently, basically they're all just going to be charging at us in random formations, which will make things easier for us. In this case, I do a very lazy encirclement of this cav unit, barely bothering to get behind them. Maybe that was enough to apply a morale shock. It looks like we're going to win anyway. And here you can see their units just all over the place. Many of them are going to be low enough morale-wise that we can rout them by just hitting them with the artillery a bunch of times, like right here. We see a few units rout pretty much as soon as they reach our lines. This other unit is squaring up, and that's probably a good thing to do because I actually am calf charging them right now. However, they rout as the calf reach them. So that's absolutely perfect. Now the square will be slaughtered. I'm sure the artillery firing at them did the work for us there, but the calf will get all the glory, all the kills, and all of the experience points, I guess. So a bit later, some more units have shown up for a more normal line battle where they're not just routing away. We do have more guns than them, so while I'm sure their guns are a little bit better than ours, we have the advantage with the ranged battle. Out on the flank, looks like more stuff's being crushed by the cav and there's a tiny group here that our cav can soon turn in on and take out they're probably not going to be doing too much damage to us just sniping away they likely got to live a bit longer than they would have otherwise because i was distracted microing these other cav my right flank cav went all the way to the back of the map to attack the random enemy units that were still hanging around at the back we took out some guys who were probably garrisoned in that wall then i go after the nearby infantry unit that was shooting at my cav they annoyingly squared up, and I just did my usual, well, let's just charge at them anyway strategy. This time it wasn't so effective. It seems the square does delete a few cav units as they come into contact, and I'm guessing it gives them some kind of bonus in the fight afterwards. Plus, some enemy cav showed up to join the fight. So that was a bit dodgy, but we still have numbers there. We're just going to lose a whole bunch of our lancers grinding through the enemy like that. Back at the front lines, the line battle continued on for a while with no clear victor until finally I just grabbed my swords and charged out into the enemy, and that's more like it. Looks like over here the cab and some elephants have moved out to do a similar thing, and then at the back I disengaged from that unit I was fighting, killed just the cab unit including their general, and then I went back to just overwhelm that last remaining infantry unit. To give us this result, Looking good, the enemy's loss is far greater than ours, and our army is still somewhat alive. We can, of course, just buy the troops back. So it's all good. A few of those enemy units do survive, and that means we're going to have to play things a bit carefully, because, of course, that little group will probably come back in and destroy all the buildings that are between them and the main settlement. So there's no strategically good way for us to stop them from doing that. We're going to have to just split our army. So what I ended up doing is splitting two or three units off to sit at the college, the building I most wanted to keep alive at the moment. And everything else will start moving towards Amsterdam, because I want to hit Amsterdam as soon as possible, since that's the location where they're going to recruit a new army, if any, so we want to get it under siege to cancel any recruitment. In this case, we can't quite reach it, but we can do the old drop the guns trick to get a tiny bit more movement on everything else, and that allows us to start the siege. And even if they do sally out against us, they're going to have plenty of militia and stuff. So nothing unusual. Looks like the United Provinces are going to be in trouble with this one. Leaving those guys behind proves to have been a good idea because we are able to intercept the enemy's raiding force after their first raid, that is. Or maybe they raided two things, actually. Basically, we killed them, so we might have saved a bit of money and some productivity of the province. And then those guys can go down to join our other sieging force afterwards, the guys we have here at Stuttgart. I decided to just order resolve this attack because I thought, well, I don't really care what happens to this army since it's done now. That's the end of the territory in this direction. And now we have the territory. We can start making money on it. And I guess we save money for the thousand or so troops we just lost in that order resolve. Good stuff. As for the siege of Amsterdam, we can combine the guns into the main force and reinforce with some of these new cav units I've unlocked, the sword cav, that are more of a melee unit. 
Just going to leave that siege going because attacking the forts would probably be very difficult. Now I needed to decide what to do with my little second army. One option was to go for Spain, because they did declare war on us a while ago. So far, they haven't done anything with that declaration. So I thought, well, maybe they'll just continue to ignore us and we can essentially use the second army to make this siege of Amsterdam go a bit quicker, because we're probably going to have to siege them out until they uh, starve. But if we can throw in another army, we might be able to get around that. So here's us with two armies. The balance bar is good enough that I decided to risk the auto resolve, although not risking it so much that I didn't save immediately before, obviously. The result was actually really good. I think we lost way less than we would have lost if I did that as a manual attack on the forts. So pretty decent, we'll take that for sure. And with that, Amsterdam is taken, the United Provinces are gone as a faction. So that's another of our enemies wiped off the map. So far, our conquest is looking good. Just like with France though, this will now cause a delay because we'll have to stay here for a long time with our main force before we can leave without it just rebelling. While we're waiting around, Austria offers an alliance and I decided to take that alliance because having some allies out to our east is probably going to be handy. As for our second army, I bolstered it with some of the troops garrisoning Paris who didn't all need to be there. You can see public order still pretty bad, but we can now get away with like a third of the stack. So I can spare enough units to put an army together and have them go off towards Spain who still haven't made a move on us. So I thought maybe they just don't have any troops and we can throw in a bit of an army and actually take Spain while we're waiting. Here's what we're actually waiting for. A nice rebellion pops up in the United Provinces, we quickly kill them and then go back to the city where the crackdown bonus evens things out for a while at least with public order. Now do you remember the two agents I had back in India? I sent them to walk back to Europe and they're just about here. Must have taken something like 15 in-game years to get here but they're still alive and kicking which I figured wouldn't be the case so that's good. We can actually use them for stuff, in particular the Scholar who increases research speed. Now my forces arrive in Spain after some uneventful turns and we find there is a half stack guarding Madrid but no sign of any other forces. I move into besiege but ran out of points right in front of it but we're going to set up a siege there and see if we can cheekily take the place. In the meantime Savoy have now built a new army and again they appear to be going for Paris. I would build some infantry to defend but I've actually reached the cap for making infantry. You can only have 12 infantry units, meaning from now on we're going to rely even more on cav because any new armies we make will be pretty much just cav from now on. I think we can unlock some light infantry units at some point to get some more variety. But yes, we'll have to work against that 12 unit cap. Here is Prussia declaring war on us. We slightly border Prussia, a tiny bit of our eastern border is next to one of their regions. We're mostly next to Austria and Hanover. So this is not a gigantic war for us, but potentially annoying because they do have lots of troops, as I've seen with my spy just walking through their territory in the previous couple of turns. So we might have to look out for that. We've got our army at Amsterdam, of course. There's a terrible technology deal from Poland. And speaking of technology, here's a little look at how the main tech tree is at the moment. Normally in Empire Total War, you would rush fire by rank and you can see I actually am allowed to research fire by rank at the moment. But I'm not doing it because as far as I know Indian units are not allowed to fire by rank so if you research it it just doesn't do anything. At least that's my vague memory. Might not be the case in Darth Mod for all I know but I didn't research it so we're going with it and I guess with our infantry cap it doesn't matter all that much actually or at least it won't in the long run. Now back to Spain. We start the siege I was going for. Looks like it's a balanced setup and that's another case where we definitely don't want to attack the forts. We'll just stand here and see if they sally because a field battle would be way easier for us. As for Prussia, there's not an enormous amount we can do to defend against them. They can just walk into our territory and potentially take something because I can't really leave Amsterdam. But because we have stuff in this vague area, I'm not too worried. We can react if we need to. But before any of that, looks like we've got a situation down in Spain because an army that I hadn't seen before appears from the north. Not sure what it was doing up there, but here it is and it attacks my besieging force. I wanted to retreat, but the option is greyed out for whatever reason. So now we have to fight being attacked from front and back. 
But that's not all that bad because the attacks from front and back will happen at different times. If we just deploy next to the edge of the map, we can fight their reinforcements first. Meaning this could actually be two okay battles rather than one challenging battle. Plus, on top of that, we can make use of the fact that the reinforcements will be coming on one unit at a time. The only challenge is to get your men set up where the reinforcements will appear, because it's not always obvious, it doesn't tell you, and you kind of have to guess based on the campaign map setup. Looks like I guessed almost right, half my army is in the right place, and the other half is now folding around to box off the area the enemy are using to deploy, and will shoot them from all directions. Meanwhile, a few units are facing the other direction because their first army is actually advancing towards us. That means we kind of need to finish off the reinforcements before the main army arrives, and whether we can do that depends on how quickly they're going to show up. It does take quite a long time for each unit to get onto the field. While we wait, our gunners are just sniping away. In this situation, all of our cav aren't very useful because we need the enemy's general area to remain clear so more units can come in and fill the gaps. So we need to defeat them ideally using ranged attacks. Our gunners aren't going to be very good, we have an advantage in ranged battling, that being that the enemy will constantly block their own line of sight with their unit movements, so we're going to have more guns firing than they do. Looks like some cav ran on and managed to get to our men, but they were actually trying to run to the other side of our troops rather than attacking them, meaning they got charge cancelled and didn't do very much damage at all. However, the fight behind us is beginning now. The enemy have arrived and I've already peeled off some troops to go sit behind this wall and try to distract them, but it's not going to be enough. You can see loads of units are now approaching the back of our reinforcement box. We need to take more units away from it and give up on defeating the reinforcements quickly. Shooting stuff with guns doesn't kill them fast because if they don't rout due to the small arms fire debuff, then it does take a long time to get more debuffs just because the guns don't kill them very fast. So yes, that's a slow process, but I have turned some units around to face the new horde. Fortunately for us, the first army was totally chaotic with like no formation. I was able to get swords in amongst them pretty easily. And now the lancers, which before were not of any use to us, are going to be of perfect use because we can just charge them all over the place. So yeah, the enemy aren't able to shoot us very much. Where they were shooting, they were mainly shooting at our guys who were in cover behind the wall, so that's perfect. And stuff like those guerrilla units are going to be super weak against lancer charges. Somewhere in this chaos where my lancers are just engaging everything in melee, we take out an enemy captain and we see some routes close by as well. Looks like there is the small arms fire debuff combined with being attacked by Cav that got rid of those infantry. We're about to get rear attacked here, however this unit also routes as they were forming up so that will help out those men, don't need to turn around quite yet. And now we are slaughtering stuff all over the place. Here's a bit different because we're fighting their one elite unit, they have some Walloon guards. These guys have similar melee stats to melee units, like my swords, so we were trading pretty much one for one with these guys. That is until we hit a lancer charge into their back and that's probably going to sort that out for us. So yes, their first army is going to be defeated, it's mostly defeated already. The reinforcement army is being defeated, but it's taking a while because most of them still aren't on the field yet. And here we do finally get that rear attacker wasn't paying enough attention, and they start blasting into the back of my men. Fortunately enough, once we turn around and start shooting, the battle's kind of over. The reinforcements get to a low enough morale point that they just rout whenever they come onto the field. So now we'll work through the rest of the enemy army without doing anything. However, now I'm going to switch to some footage of this just seemingly happening again. The reason was not caught on camera, and that is because after that battle, there was a power cut, and the video corrupted, and I don't have any results or any campaign footage after this. So what I did is I went back to this battle, to the quick save before it, and I slammed on God mode, because I have zero patience. I'm like, well, if you're going to force me to do the battle twice, then the second time I'm going to do it without taking any losses. So this is the same battle, but with God mode enabled. That means you can't lose troops. So you can just melee attack everything. You don't need any strategy. Eventually you'll take them down. You actually can lose because your men can rout. There are things that can rout you even at full strength, like being hit by your own side's artillery and stuff like that. But in this case, we're fine, so we just stand around <laughs> gradually routing and killing enemies. And eventually we win the battle again. I don't have the footage from right after the battle either, but here's the situation in the next turn. The Savoy army did go and besiege Paris, so that siege is just ongoing. 
We're going to leave it because I want them to attack, ideally. Sallying would be bad for us. And down in Spain, the siege is still going. You can see the defeated army remnants off to the right there. And the reinforcement army is actually still somewhat alive because I routed them so much in my second cheated version. We didn't actually kill that many, so there's still a decent force inside the forts, perhaps too much to easily take down. Because of that I decided to leave them under siege even more. We're going to get another sally because one unit walked towards me here. I figured I could intercept them. The balance bar kind of suggests we're just fighting that one unit, but it also says there we're fighting the garrison of the town as well. And as it turns out, we are fighting the garrison of the town, so we end up inadvertently getting another siege sally attempt. So here's my chance to re-kill the garrison and get back to the amount of death they should have experienced the first time we killed them. First off, we fight the one unit that triggered this battle, just sent all of the lancers to run at them, and that's going to do the trick. After that, we can line up and again wait for the enemy's reinforcements to trickle in, and they're not going to form up or anything, they're just coming at us one at a time, nice and easy. Here's their first offering, hits those bandit cav, and they are able to hit my line because my guys weren't feeling particularly shooty. I just about put them in square formation at the last second. This does kind of count, I think. You still get the anti-cav fighting bonus, even if you were only just going into square as they hit. Plus, I happen to have my swords right behind this unit, so they can get into the square as well and start killing. And I'm sure those bandit cav weren't very good. We defeat them, and then we start the line battling. They're coming over with a few units, and we're just going to outnumber them because they're coming in one at a time. Looks like they're leading with pikes there, in fact. As for my lancer cav, I'm going after the light infantry, the guerrillas, because they're going to be nice and vulnerable to just being charged off the face of the earth. You can see their units are all over the place, no formation whatsoever, which is perfect for further cav action. This unit was too close, I was worried they were about to shoot me, so I figured let's just get them into melee. They did form a square as I charged, doing the same thing I did earlier, but it's not going to work for them because we have loads of cav and we can just break the square wide open. They also rout after a few seconds of combat, and that's always useful. Then I'm going to get the Lancers out of there to avoid a mess. Looks like at the front lines their pikes and gunners have lost against my gunners in a ranged battle, that's good stuff. Next I sent my Cav to go and take out the enemy's guns which were just setting up at their reinforcement point. Want to get them off the field before they do some actual damage. Their other units for some reason seem to be ignoring me. They switched their AI and everything started walking towards roughly the middle of the map. My cav are also there, so I thought maybe they were chasing my cav just very slowly, but even the things that were engaged in the line battling turned off and started walking towards the middle of the map. I think the AI reverted to the default reinforcement behavior, which is to move all of the reinforcements to stand in the middle of the map. Usually, the AI will then make another decision along the way, so they won't actually do that. But in this case, it seems they did it after engaging in combat, which I've never seen before. Curious. Anyway, to end the battle, I pursued them with my cav and started just rear attacking them to try and rout them because it seemed like they weren't going to come back and I couldn't be bothered to move our whole formation and try and set up a more orderly battle. This way of doing things will cause slightly more casualties among our cav, but it does the business and the difference isn't going to be very great if the enemy rout just as soon as the melee start, which at this stage they pretty much did. Leading to this result. This time the garrison is much more dead, our army is still very much alive and looking pretty healthy, so the siege of Madrid is gradually going our way. By the time our turn comes about again, the balance bar on this siege is looking pretty good. Felt okay about doing an auto resolve here, even without the safety save, the result was okay. I think that was pretty realistic for what we would have actually got doing that attack. And there we go, Spain has fallen. Like France and the United Provinces, the Netherlands I should say, we are going to face massive public order issues. So now pretty much all of our armies are tied down dealing with the gigantic resistance to invaders from taking capitals. We're sort of out of momentum here, we're going to have to hold this position for a bit. But there's still more to do because we're at war with Portugal, who control both Portugal and Gibraltar to our south. So our army in Spain will need to do some more work to hold the area by the looks of things. Ideally what I need now is a peace treaty with Spain because they have a gigantic foreign empire and they could just send troops back to attack us. 
just like France did earlier in the campaign, so I was trying to get a peace deal, but the long story short on both that and all peace deals I've tried to get is they're not going to happen. Sometimes we can get a deal like this, where if I give the Mughal Empire Scotland, they'll get peace with me, but no reasonable deals where we're just ending the war, even in places like India, where I can't disengage with Mysore because they just refuse to end the war. It would be nice to just not be at war with them, just in case they show up with a fleet. Pretty sure they're not going to. Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead a bit here to show the last thing we need to look at in this part, and that is that attack we saw coming in on Paris. The siege was ended when I just sent some of the troops from Amsterdam to go and attack these guys, the Amsterdam garrison having been gradually replaced by a bunch of freshly recruited mob trash. This battle I ended up facing against them is one of these ones where I'm looking at it and thinking, I cannot be bothered because I feel like this will be so easy. The balance bar must be lying. Maybe it was lying, not sure, but the result was good enough. We defeat their besieging force. They're still alive, so I'm going to have to chase them down with some stuff. But not much else to do, because luckily Prussia didn't do anything with their declaration of war, just like Spain didn't. But I am probably going to do something to them. My two projects now are both to attack Portugal with the army in Spain at some point, and to put something together with our main force from Amsterdam and go after Prussia. The other option, of course, is to go after Savoy and finish them off, which I might do, because otherwise they're probably going to keep sending stacks at France and that's going to get annoying. But the main focus for the next part might just be standing around and trying not to lose for a while so we can get the public order situation under control and then get our momentum back. Well, you'll have to join me to see in the next part.